The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Now John wore a clothing of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestors, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into his granary. But the chaff will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, everyone. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you all from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Anything that says Christmas spirit more than being called a bunch of snakes? I can't think of any. And if there is, uh, let me know afterwards. So, happy Advent, you bunch of vipers. Doesn't that feel good? Soak it in, right? Relish this moment of being called a viper. You know, now that you have been insulted by a guy wearing camel underwear, you know, now, now Advent can happen. Now it's real. We're off to a good start, finally. (laughs) Advent is weird. It just is. Even for the most veteran and seasoned of Lutheran Christians, this season of Advent's weird. And while weirdness is not the point of these four weeks leading up to Christmas, it doesn't change the fact that Advent is just disconcerting to us. It's weird because Advent isn't Christmas. It isn't Christmas. Literally everywhere else, outside of this room right now, it is Christmas. There's Christmas songs on the radio, Christmas movies on Hallmark, Christmas parties to go to. But when you walk in here today, and you get called a bunch of snakes, and hear this scathing sermon from John the Baptist, it really kind of sucks the joy out of it, doesn't it? Now, I've heard this story about John the Baptist preached so many different ways. You know, some pastors just try to soften up what John's saying here for everybody, and some just simply ignore what he's saying altogether and try to talk about something else. But there's really no other way to be honest with it other than to call it what it is. It's a call-out directed directly at us. John's calling us out. And John the Baptist is who John the Baptist is. He is a fiery, Old Testament-style prophet. And a prophet's job is very simple. To get people to see the plain truth of who we are and what we're up to. Unlike a pastor, there's no real sheen to it, right? You know, there's a lot of rough edges still. There's no careful leading people to the truth. There's no gentle nudging involved. It's just straight up, in your face truth. And the God's honest truth is typically a shock to our system, right? We're not ready to just take it you know, right away. We need, we need to have it like fed to us slowly over time. It's never easy to swallow when you get it thrown in your face like John does, especially here in this season that we are in. You know, we're looking for a nice, comfy, soft place to settle in and just wait for baby Jesus to come. But John the Baptist, he's letting us have it. It's not what we're expecting today. It's not what we want to hear. 
right? Give us angels. Give us mangers. Who wants repentance? So why John the Baptist? Why now? Why today? Can't this wait until the end of January when we've all blown our New Year's resolutions already? You know, wouldn't that be a better time to schedule in a good dose of guilt for us? You know, for not keeping up on our faithfulness? Can't we just pretend till we get through the holidays? Please, throw us a bone here, right? Come on. Isn't Jesus the reason for the season? As they always say. Well, yeah. Jesus is, of course, the reason for the season. The reason for the Christmas season. But clearly, it ain't Christmas yet, is it? It's Advent. And in Advent, the reason for the season is sin. John's job is to point to Jesus. And the cold, hard fact is, we wouldn't need Jesus to come in the flesh at all if we didn't have any reasons to repent, would we? Now, let me be very clear about this part. Jesus is coming whether we repent or not. God's coming to do what God needs to do for us, even if we are totally oblivious to our own failings. No matter how good we might be at calling out our own sin, or typically how it goes, how good we are at calling out other people's sin. That's not going to save us. No matter how good we are at that, Jesus is going to be the one that saves us. But if we're going to fully embrace the reign of God that comes along with the grace of Christ in His birth, faithfulness, always starts with opening your hearts to the truth that we need a Savior. John the Baptist is a stark, blunt instrument to remind us that we need Jesus. We need Him bad. And without Him, we're in a pretty tough place. And that reason that is so crucial for us to hear today, before we get to Christmas, What what John is actually giving us here today, in the plainest of words, is where the Christian's home base resides. The place that we can always come back to and start over again. And that, guys, is repentance. And the reason that's good news, the reason that is very hopeful for us to hear today, is that the one thing that is always promised that come along with repentance is, of course, forgiveness. Forgiveness. It is a promise directly from God. Repentance is always coupled with forgiveness. And then that home base is made real, it is made tangible in that thing we call baptism. We lay ourselves bare, exposed to God in our brokenness and in our failings, and we're made clean again and again and again. The baptism that John promises Jesus is going to give to us, has given to us, it is eternal. It is a new life. It is literally a new state of existence once that happens, which means it is always there. It is always the place that we can start over. We come back to the font, be honest, and we hear that we are forgiven. If only it were that easy, right? More often than not, us preacher types will talk about repentance like it's just the easiest thing in the world to do, right? Hey, come on back here to home base, come to the font, lay it all out, start over again, renewed, refreshed, boom, off you go. That simple, right? Easy as pie. I know it's not as simple as it sounds. I know how hard it is to name my own sin, even if I'm seeing it in the first place. I know how painful And scary it can be to look someone in the eye that I have hurt and say what I did, to say I'm sorry. Like any good theologian, I can compartmentalize, right? I can theologically say, yep, I'm a snake. Yep, I need Jesus to come into my life and save me. Yep, I'm all sorry about that. And then never give it a second thought. I can do that. I'm sure everybody else can too. Repentance is not easy stuff. Repentance is Advent. Not Christmas. It's a shock to our system when we have to deal with it. Even when we do want to turn around and try to make it back to that home base that John is preaching about today, it's that wake of destruction that we tend to leave behind us that seems so impossible to try to wade our way back through to that home base. It is, it's just impossible, it seems, sometimes. Repentance, repentance is also dangerous to do. It unearths things that you'd rather just let lie and not think about anymore. Right? It stirs up uncomfortable feelings, dredges up those past fights that hurt. It resuscitates big-time mistakes. 
It kind of makes you feel like that snake John is calling us today, doesn't it? No one wants that. It can be so much simpler sometimes to just drown in our own mistakes than reach for that lifeline of forgiveness. Now, digging up history, it can make you look bad. It can cost you status. It can cost you a job even. And it can cost you relationships. There's a reason then that John the Baptist is out operating in the wilderness. Because the wilderness is not safe. It's a place that can hurt you. It is a lonely, desolate place to go to. No one wants that. Yet throughout all of Scripture, the wilderness is a place to be feared, yet it is a place where faith is always forged. Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness during the Exodus, preparing to come to the Holy Land. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness being tempted. And there are countless other Instances where people are out in the wilderness, a place that they do not want to be. John then is telling us in the most strong language possible that true repentance means taking your life and exposing it to the wilds, opening it up to criticism, showing it for what it is, and that is no easy thing to do. But when you can find the courage to do that, when you can put the right people around you to support you in your trek out into the desert, out into the wilderness, when you get to that home base in the waters of baptism, boy, you will find Jesus there. And His grace unburdens you. And it wipes that gauntlet of sinful obstacles that you brave journeying through. It wipes them clean like they never even happened. And you have then the world in front of you. And off you go. So often, Christians, we we feel lost. Like our spiritual compass is broken or busted and doesn't work anymore. And we don't know what to do next. John the Baptist is showing us here today. It is baptism. The comfort of forgiveness. The release that comes along with repentance. It is in the fullness of God's reign that we can see that whichever direction our hearts are being pulled towards from that starting point, that Christ indeed has come. And Christ will come again. Amen.